Welcome to this video on inorganic ions. So first let's think about what an ion actually is. So in a normal atom, the number of protons in the nucleus should equal the number of electrons in its outer shells. However, most atoms want to have a full outer shell. Now in this atom of sodium, you can see that it has one electron in its outermost shell, it's so it's not full. In this atom of chlorine, it has seven electrons in its outermost shell, so it's missing one electron, so it doesn't have a full outer shell. Now to uh, overcome this problem, it's often the case that sodium, uh, the sodium atom will donate this electron to chlorine. So this means that sodium now has a full outer shell and chlorine has a full outer shell. But now we can no longer call these atoms. Because the number of protons does not equal the number of electrons, we have to refer to these as ions. Now, because sodium has lost an electron, that makes it positively charged. So it is a positively charged ion with a charge of plus one. Lost one electron, so a plus one charge. Over here, we have a chloride ion. This atom has gained an electron, and so it has become negatively charged and actually has a minus one charge. One electron gained, so a minus one charge. Now, ions crop up all over the place in your course, but in this short topic, you need to highlight four of those. So the first is hydrogen ions. So here, this is an atom of hydrogen that has lost one electron. Now, hydrogen ions are important in controlling pH. Now, you can see on this chart here, where you have a pH of 7, the, um, the pH 7 is given a relative hydrogen ion concentration of 1. As you reduce the pH, you increase the hydrogen ion concentration. And as you de uh, increase the pH, you decrease the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, pH is important in biology because pH and hydrogen ion concentration affect protein shape. In particular, they affect uh, globular protein shape, where the globular protein is held in its particular shape, its tertiary structure, by the intramolecular bonding of hydrogen, uh, hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds, as well as covalent bonds. The hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds are held in place by the relative charges of the R groups within the protein. Where you increase or decrease hydrogen ion concentration by changing pH around the uh, globular protein, the hydrogen ions are going to interact with those bonds and are going to change them so that each protein has an optimum hydrogen ion concentration at which they're going to function. The second ion highlighted here is the sodium ion. Now, sodium ions are involved in uh, two forms of transport. The first um, is in the co-transport of glucose. This is um, in that glucose can only enter a cell if it is moving into that cell alongside one sodium ion. Sodium ions are also used in the sodium potassium uh, pump, and this is where three molecules of sodium, sorry, three ions of sodium are moved out of a cell for every two potassium ions that are moved in. This is active transport, so requires ATP. The third ion is the phosphate ion. So this is actually a molecular ion in that uh, it is a PO4-2 negative ion. Now this ion is uh, required in three different locations for you in biology. The first is as a phosphate group in a nucleotide, so either a DNA or RNA nucleotide. The second is in a molecule of ATP, where three phosphate groups are bonded to um, a ribose sugar, uh, which is also bonded to an adenine base. So uh, two different forms of nucleotide there, either in the DNA and RNA structural nucleotides or in the RNA derivative nucleotide of ATP. Finally, the phosphate group is also required to form a phospholipid, so where the phosphate group is bonded to a glycerol molecule, which in turn is bonded to an additional two fatty acids. Phospholipids, of course, required in the um, cell membrane. Finally, the last ion highlighted here is the iron ions. This is an iron atom which has lost two electrons, so it has a plus two charge. Now, iron ions are found within molecules of hemoglobin, and hemoglobin 
uh, is found within red blood cells and is responsible for transporting oxygen around an animal. These are the key terms from this topic, so pause now if you would like to write those down. Loads more free resources available on pxsbiology.com. Please remember to like, subscribe and share if you found this video useful.